Hey guys, happy solar eclipse. I hope it's a happy one for you. I'm filming this a few days ahead of the eclipse and it's 11 o'clock at night. I'm just chilling and I'm starting to get all these messages and I feel like I can't piece them together without doing a reading. So I figure let's do the solar eclipse reading and see what comes through. Some of the things I'm getting are rather intense. Fair warning. Um, it seems like there's something that is getting ready to happen. <laughs> That's just the way it feels. And we need to prepare in some way. Okay, so the first thing I saw was a crack. It was like there was darkness. It was all black. I was meditating and this image came to me. It's all black and this crack started to pull the blackness, darkness apart. And it was like light was entering. And I heard light enters the dense energy of the earth. So I feel like, I, like, I don't know, this could be a metaphor, of course, for something that's going on within. And it's probably that too. But I feel like something is coming. <laughs> Some energy is coming, like penetrating the dimensions of, I don't know, energy to get to earth for some purpose, for some reason. And it's like splitting open um, some shadow energy so that it can get in and do some work, okay? Then I heard so loud, like so loud, like almost like ringing in my ears, keep the faith. I mean, it was a calm voice, but it was loud. Keep the faith, don't give up your faith. Don't question yourself. Don't start spiraling into the darkness. And by darkness here, I feel like this isn't like exploring your shadow and all that kind of stuff. It's like, don't let the light go out. If you're going to go into the darkness, take a flashlight. And maybe this is why spirit is coming in with this light through the cracks because we need some assistance at this time. Our batteries are low. It's like the light, our flashlight is flickering. I don't know. It seems like very intense. <laughs> okay. um, and then I heard, we'll have eight minutes to reset. I don't know, guys. Eight minutes to reset. We are in the year of eight. You know, 2024 20, equals an eight. So something might happen and then there's eight minutes to reset. And then I saw like a blackout, like um, there's some kind of blackout. Now, again, could all be metaphors, could be about you in a relationship with someone, could be about you with yourself, could be something in the collective. Just a messenger. <laughs> I'm hearing the transponder. I'm the transponder. Okay, I don't know. Uh, and something about this blackout is going to trigger our ancestral fears. I have ancestral fears are activated. Eight minutes to reset and then our ancestral fears are activated. This is like kind of, there's a diagram in here, okay? Um, so when we feel fearful, when something unfolds, whether it's personally or collectively, notice that your ancestral traumas are getting activated and this kind of makes sense with eclipse energy because historically way back when when the moon eclipsed the sun it was a cause for concern where'd the light go things aren't going to grow everything is in darkness it's scary for our ancestors way back so it makes sense that this time around the eclipse, we would be a little bit stirred up. We would be a little bit hypervigilant or on edge, okay? And so there's something about this time um, that could activate those ancestral fears. I feel like in addition to the eclipse, so it's almost like something else is happening. Then I heard the shadow of Aries and the shadow of Pisces. So this new moon is in Aries. And right now, Mars is in Pisces with Saturn. So the shadow side of those signs might be coming to the fore. And that ain't good. <laughs> no shadow, you know, side of any sign is really good. But the shadow side of Aries is a warlike energy. And the shadow side of Pisces is an illusion. 
and confusion. And I have here like warlike energy turns into con confusion, illusion. So there's something that's... I don't know, guys. There's something that's going to be unleashed, stirred up, triggering our ancestral fears, but it's an illusion. There isn't actually any reason to be at war. And it feels like to be at war with ourselves. That's the energy I feel. It's not like with one another. It's with ourselves. It's about like losing faith. All of a sudden we lose faith. Or... You know, we're pretty strong here as a collective and those of us who are tuning in as empaths and intuitives and healers and all sorts of beautiful people here. So it's unlikely that we'll be susceptible to this in the way that others who aren't awake might be. But I still feel like this is a pretty heavy energy, so much so that the light has to come through the dense energy of the earth to kind of break something apart or help us in some way okay so just remember how powerful you are and what a force you are and don't lose your faith in yourself and in uh spirituality and in uh one another okay i don't know <laughs> it's so dramatic it's so dramatic where is the moon right now i feel like <laughs> where is the moon hold on i just want to check that out for a second uh, the moon is in Aries right now as I am filming this in my seventh house. So yeah, it makes sense that I want to talk to you guys right now about this. So the moon is with, oh no, this is, sorry, I have it on the eclipse. Let's see, where is it right now? The moon is in Aquarius as I'm filming this. Mm. Aquarius can be quite the truth teller and getting down to things. Okay, no, no sugar coating, no sprinkles. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. It's also Mercury retrograde, and my technology situation has been super weird. Even the channel, weird things are happening, um, which kind of makes sense with this message, don't lose the faith, because I don't know what's going on, but on the back end of my YouTube, like it says my views are like way up, you know? And on, on the front end, from what you can see, and then also another part of the back end that I can see, it says it's like way down. And I'm like, wh well, which one is it? I don't know which one it is. And I feel like what, it doesn't really matter, but I'm like, this is strange. And how many videos are like that? I don't know. So anyways, maybe I'm supposed to tell someone something, maybe this is happening for you if you have a channel, 44 on the clock right there. Yeah, uh, there's something weird going on. Maybe it has to do with some kind of like attack against the spiritual community in some way. I don't know. I don't know. It's all good. It's all good. I have faith, right? Keep the faith. Whatever happens, I believe, is for my highest good. Okay. And the highest good of all. One, one, one. Yes. Okay, guys. <laughs> it's like, let's get into it. Let's see what's going on. Uh, I want to pull some archetype cards and then also the alchemy cards. I made a little spread here. So we'll look at the collective energy and the collective path we're on. The entity and shadow energy that I'm picking up on. Uh, the blocks that that shadow is trying to create or the challenges. Or I even got the word attachments that are happening at this time. And then how do they work? Like, how is this happening? How can we clear it? Or maybe we need to integrate it. I'm not sure. And then how to protect ourselves at this time. Okay, if you don't feel this vibe at all, um, just don't listen to it. It's all good. You know, but I'm not going to sit here with these messages alone. <laughs> so, thanks for being here. So let's see. What are we getting here? Um... Yeah, okay, let's get six of these. Two, three, they're coming out face down, so we'll go through them one by one. No, it's this, no, okay. Get 
There you are, I see you. Okay, why don't we look at two alchemy cards in terms of like the two forces that are coming together at this time, the sun and the moon. Yeah, so let's look at the sun's energy, spirit. The sun's energy right now. What energy? Okay, that's like half the deck. What's the sun's energy? Okay, maybe we should start with the moon then. What's the moon's energy? What's the moon's energy? Interesting. Dissolution in the sun. Holy moly. <laughs> See, the sun wouldn't come out. The sun wouldn't come out. This is why light is being sent. Yeah, because the sun is dissolving, dissolution. This could also be like identity dissolution, which is super interesting that that's coming out for me personally, because I was just talking to someone about that very concept. Identity dissolution. So people could be looking at their identity reconsidering themselves and who they are and do they really believe and and how they're and how they're thinking do they really believe the thoughts they have and what they're presenting to the world or are they being inauthentic at some level but i feel like on a bigger scale the sun's energy sun and dissolution let's take a quick look at dissolution and then we'll go into the um the sun's energy, because this is actually the moon's energy. <laughs> well, it is dissolving the sun, right? It, that's a, it's an eclipse. Okay. I hope you got a tea or a, a bubbly drink or something, because I feel like we're going to be here a minute. <laughs> okay. Some of you are listening in the bath. Cool. <laughs> I just saw someone in the back. Okay, dissolution. Surrender, dissolving formlessness. The great alchemical operation of water. It represents the form becoming formless. That which is solid dissolving into liquid. Oh, what was that reading we had? Liquid sun. Remember that? It's a whole reading about the liquid sun. I feel like this is connected. I don't know if that was a collective reading. I feel like it might have been, or if it was a sign. If you remember, please comment below and I'll pin your comment. Um, I've been doing that lately too. I've been pinning people's comments because I just feel like some of them are just so poignant, perfect, and they shed more insight on the reading and I feel like others should see that. So yeah, I'll be probably doing that more often, pinning your comments. Um, so everyone can see the wisdom <laughs> that you have, right? Not just me, you too. So, liquid sun, liquid sunshine. Okay. Um, in many, many alchemical texts, it is the first operation and summarizes the heart of alchemy as the axiom salve et coagula, dissolve to unite. For our purposes, it's important to know dissolution involves a dissol dissolving of definitions, identities, and labels. The strongholds of the ego drown in the emotional realm of the water. Yeah, so while this all looks scary to the unawakened, it's actually a big moment for us. This is a big moment collectively, I feel, for us to really like let some of those identity traps that we've been stuck in and that we forged ourselves, just let them go. <clears throat> just let them go. Hmm. Maybe something about speaking too. We dive back to the beginning, the prima materia. The operation is humbling and disorienting and oftentimes feels as though the self we knew has disappeared. Who are we now? How will others describe us? When these questions are afoot, the alchemical magic of dissolution is underway. By surrendering to the waves, we unite with the primordial essence and return to our deepest self. I feel like a lot of the sign-specific readings have been about this, about returning to ourself like a deep part of ourself and something's coming in that is going to the light coming through the density of our ego or of our identity 
or the earth both both and coming through and like breaking up all the stuff that we don't need that isn't resonant with our soul's purpose and in our end our ability to connect to one another a big interface i'm hearing between us <clears throat> interesting we have the same code i'm i'm getting the in I don't know, I'm being shown something technical. Something about the interface of between our codes. What is this? Um, is our identity. It's like it looks like a translucent motherboard I'm seeing. But our identity and our our attachment, that's that attachment. The attachment we have to our identities is what keeps us apart. And this is a moment where identity begins to really slip and fall away. And those who haven't done the work are going to freak out because <laughs> they don't know who they are without their identity. Okay. Whoa. Let's see the sun's energy since this is the moon. So the moon is really doing us a favor as it always does. Makes sense too, because I typically like to read in the day because this room is so dark. When I come in here, I feel like I enter into moon energy, into the subconscious. It helps me like get into that space. And then when I leave the room after I'm done the readings, it's usually bright out, it's daylight, and it helps me make that transition back into my conscious awakening, awakened life, you know, where I'm not in this vortex of energy in here. So now when I read at night, it always feels like, oh, weird, like I'm not coming back up into my conscious awareness. It, the energy seems to continue on. But I feel like in this reading, that's important because the moon is doing us a favor our subconscious, unconscious mind is doing us a favor right now. If that makes sense. The sun. Benevolent guide. How beautiful. See, it's like the moon comes in, eclipses the sun, which is our guide. You know, so many religions are based around stories of the sun. Okay. Um, our benevolent guide, the thing that brings light into the world, that helps things grow, that gives us a sense of time. The moon does too, but sunset, sunrise, we usually talk about that more than we do about the moonrise. Our benevolent guide is being eclipsed and we're kind of on our own for maybe eight minutes. <laughs> we're, we're on our own. I bet you that's the time of the eclipse, about eight minutes. How long is the solar eclipse? No, it's not eight minutes. <laughs> it lasts only a few seconds to about three minutes. Hmm. Something, and then somewhere else says four minutes. I don't know. I think there's something about that eight minutes. Let me see. I'm just going to type in eight minutes. Oh, yeah, and it's on April 8th. Of course, duh. I don't know. Okay, let's not get too lost here. Something about eight minutes, though. Okay, so anyways. <laughs> this is what Spirit's saying. Losing faith. The benevolent guide, our guide, our guides, Spirit, whatever. It's like we might momentarily, like this gets eclipsed, right? And it's like all of a sudden... We could feel lost. We could lose the faith, but we're not. We're not lost, and we're not going to lose the faith. The faith lives in our heart. The faith lives in our heart. Yes. The number 13 is significant, too. 
13 hours, something about 13 hours. Okay. But it doesn't mean that our guides are disappearing. No, no, no. They're just being eclipsed so that we can understand that we can rely on ourselves too. That we are just as powerful. Okay, this is really important to know for us to know our own magic, our own divinity, the divinity that lives within. And this is a moment, whether it's the actual eclipse or something happens in your life where like all of a sudden you feel like, whoa, like where'd spirit go? Thanks for leaving me hanging out to dry. No, no, no. Spirit's in here. And it's time for you to realize that for some. Others of us, you're going to have to really pull on that part of yourself. Whoa, this is amazing. Okay. Um, let's get some tarot on top of these cards and then we'll turn them over. Is this the deck we want to use? No. I heard it's too dark. <laughs> Ironic. It's too dark. Okay. Bees could be a symbol. Or a sign, synchronicity that you might be seeing lately. Doves as well. <laughs> One flipped over. Um, hmm. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. I'll just put my start up here. The collective energy and path. The hunter hunting for the light. <laughs> okay, king of cups with our hearts. A heart-based hunt. Our path, we're hunting for the light. But look, the lights, that's, it's like, it's repeating a little bit, so hold on. But this is what Spirit's saying, it's like, the light's here. The light's here. I'm hearing behind your eyes as well. But the light is in here. It's in us. And right now as a collective, or maybe individually, probably a little bit of both, right? We're, out, we're, we're seeking light outside of ourselves. Spirit, show me the signs. <laughs> Spirit, show me the cards. <laughs> you know, all that. Like, show me the light. Show me. Show me. <laughs> Spirit's saying, close your eyes. Because the light's within. I mean, that's always been the case. We've always had the answers. Sometimes we just need a little extra guidance, but now seems to be like some kind of pivotal turning point and moment where we really got to know because the lights are going to go out. The flashlight is going to die for eight minutes, maybe. I don't know. And we're going to have to go within. So that's our path. That's why this is happening. So what is the entity? So, okay, originally when I sat down, I felt like there was this uh, like kind of a little bit malevolent, a little bit like, ooh, <laughs> force coming in. But now it seems to be like this is all in our favor. But there's got to be a shadow side to it. So let's see, what is the shadow side? The vessel and the high priestess. I can't even, my mind is being blown right now. Uh, look at, look at the cards. This is how it's looking on the table. Hold on a second here. Could you believe that the light is in someone else outside of yourself? The shadow energy, the high priestess. Hmm. 
Hmm. What? Hold on. I'm, I'm hearing make this make sense. I mean, I'm thinking, like, how does this make sense? But I'm hearing make this make sense. Okay, hold on a second. This is really a shadow, because it's hard for me to get, which means it's buried pretty deep. Help me out, spirit, for the highest good of all. Help me out. Predator and prey. Blood moon. Beginnings, endings, clean slates, and prophecies. <laughs> revelations insights and messages with predator and prey chasing grasping an obsession there okay i feel like there's an obsession that that the collective might be the shadow okay hold on let me rephrase rewind back it up the shadow force is getting us to be over reliant and over dependent over dependent yeah on forces outside of ourself for information i'm hearing ai okay maybe this has something to do with ai conch and consciousness but i also feel like it could be looking to spiritual gurus or spiritual teachers and like forgetting that we have our own knowledge i'm hearing gnosis we have our own knowledge within us that we can combine with the with the gurus the gurus or the healers or the people we look to for spiritual guidance we can combine our forces our knowledge like it's not just that we need to follow and listen to someone it's actually like question be skeptical bring your life experience bring your knowledge bring your downloads and like mesh them together No one person holds all the answers. That's a crock of shit. <laughs> That's what came through. That's a crock of shit. No one person holds all the answers. Predator and prey, blood moon. It's time to clean the slate. It's time to clean the slate. I'm seeing like mud being moved. Eight minute reset. Yeah, it's time to reset and combine our forces, our collective forces, our psychic forces, stop being at war with ourselves and believing that we don't we don't know anything. You see the candle move there? And and like this belief that we don't know or or that we don't trust ourselves, we don't trust our knowledge, we don't trust our abilities. It's like it's time to stop that. Prophecies and trust our prophecies, our revelations and come together rather than being alone like the high priestess alone in ourselves but yes this isn't a game of predator and prey between us but you know what's the oldest trick in the book divide and conquer right so there's something about not letting us be divided those who are on a path of healing, of ascension. Now, we might not always get along. We might not always agree with one another, and that's cool. As long as it doesn't, as long as our disagreements don't get us to go to war with ourselves. I keep hearing ourselves, not with one another, but it's like when you enter a conflict with someone, it's like you start having a war with yourself. I don't know, guys. Anything else here? Damn, this is strong. Some of you need to cleanse. Okay, I'm just going to say that. The vessel and the clean slate, beginnings and endings, blood moon. Something about menstrual cycle could be significant for some of you. 
Okay, watch your cycles, pay attention to them. They're deeply connected to the moon. You could have prophecies around that time. And if you don't have a cycle, then the women around you who do could um, influence your prophecies at that time. Interesting. Okay, I'm not saying always, I'm just saying now in this reading. All right, let's keep going. The block, the challenge, and the attachment. The queen. <laughs> it's funny how I just said that. I was like, yeah. Anyways, there might be some there might be some uh, conflict between masculine and feminine energies at this time. Maybe within yourself, or maybe that's like the energy that's being imposed on us is a conflict. You know, the light is considered to be masculine. The dark is feminine. And it's like there's a blackout. So we're in dark, we're in darkness, we're in feminine energy. And it could be scary. And it's important not to turn on that energy because the darkness is actually showing us the light within. Get what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you guys don't already watch the Rare Gazelle, channel reams channel you definitely should because she does a great job talking about the importance of darkness with light okay so check her channel out if you haven't already the queen is the block the challenge and the attachment the queen bee <laughs> the queen bee Let's see, what's the tarot card? Temperance. Yeah, it's the benevolent guide. It's over-reliance on an external force. It's like, I'm sorry it's repeating, but this is the message. And it's repeating to confirm over and over again that this is exactly the message. Sometimes we need that reassurance, but that's exactly the message. It's like we don't need this <laughs> reassurance. It's enough is enough, right? Enough is enough. Let's take, let's take this somewhere else now. Let's move beyond confirmation and take this somewhere else. Let's take our um, communion with spirit and divine consciousness and life force energy. Let's take it somewhere else to get outside of identity confirmation. I'm hearing outside of our skins, the vessel. Interesting. Is this making any sense? <laughs> oh my goodness. And it's pouring rain outside too. It's like such a, so moody. Okay. Um, how does all this work? <laughs> I don't know why I wrote that question. How does the challenge and the attachment work? Oh, how does our attachment to spirit work? This benevolent guide outside of herself. Now, this could be like a mentor that you're looking up to. It could be a partner that you feel you need to help guide you in life. It doesn't have to be like, I don't know, some guru. It could be something else for you. It could be an ancestor that you've like placed all this significance on and you feel like if you don't pray to this ancestor every day, you're going to be screwed. It's something, something like that, right? Yeah. It's like in some form or fashion, you're kind of giving away your power. And spirit is like, I mean, it's, it's don't stop communing with spirit. Okay. Like, obviously that's important, but you have to recognize the power of your will, your free will and the power of your soul. You're able to make decisions and unstick yourself from sticky situations. The divine will show you, guide you, be there for you, all of that stuff. But it's like ultimately you need to have that confidence in your will. To take that leap of faith. Okay, so how is this working our attachment? Yeah, exactly. Aletheia and the Four of Swords. It's like, this is a card of being asleep and being unconscious. Let's read Aletheia. It's like the truth, um, we're asleep to some kind of a, tr some kind of truth or the collective is. 
And maybe it's us who are here to wake them up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. If they ever find us, that is. Okay. Let's see. Truth. Yeah, we're asleep to the truth. Our soul recognizes the truth when someone speaks it. A cool wave of relief washes over the room and all the facts and figures in the world fall by the wayside. Such is the power of truth. It has an undeniable resonance that goes beyond the rational. We can also recognize aletheia or truth by its conta contagiousness. When we hear someone speak the truth, we see the truth within ourselves and are more likely to tell our own story. See what I'm saying? Our own story. Step towards an act of truth. This might look like a conversation, a gesture, a poetic act, or a ritual that honors the unveiling of what's been concealed. Reclaiming your own truth is a way to reclaim your vital energy, health, and sense of belonging in the world. Truth has its own wings. Set it free. <laughs> its own wings. Your truth. Your wings. Your wings. You have them. <laughs> You do. We'll just ring this for good measure. For your wings, you know? <laughs> and when this is in the shadow, you're, there's distortions, gaslighting. And that's how some shadow energy has gotten us to over-rely on their words of wisdom or their guidance and maybe this is like governments or maybe this is i don't know something like that or a boss or whatever but spirit's super clear in this reading at least to me it's super clear that this is all about you be very careful of allowing other people to tell you who you are, what's going on, and what's going to happen to you. And I know tarot is a lot about that. So just be very careful. You'll the truth, you can hear it. You can hear it. You can hear it. And it's as spirit said in this card, it's not necessarily what's said, the rational words that are said, but it's the resonance. There's something inside of you that unlocks Okay, so if you're hearing something, you'll know when it's not the truth, when, the, when someone's trying to get you to rely on them, to keep coming back to them. Gaslighting. And let's face it, the, the spiritual community, just like beyond YouTube, you can, just the spiritual community as a whole, has a massive shadow of ego and narcissism it's pretty entertaining to watch sometimes but you know <laughs> it's there so don't give away your power ancestral fears are activated in the blackout okay let's keep going uh, I feel like that's the next place we're going how to clear this or how to integrate we have the four of cups the knight of wands <laughs> rejection and the comic oh my goodness oh my goodness guys what do i say here silly stories silly stories reject those with the silly stories okay Also, someone who doesn't take things seriously. Including themselves. It's, it's good to laugh at yourself. But you also have to have some respect for yourself too. Okay, I don't know who that's for. It feels like it's kind of outside this message. But when I said... 
like about will those other people who are not into spirituality it's a matter of them finding us like i said when will they find us is the question i was thinking they need to come to us and not not us to them and this is like the knight of wands is someone who comes to you like those stupid scammers here on youtube <laughs> they come to you you don't seek them out they come to you which is a red flag Red flag right in your cup right there. See, the, they come offering, and there's the red flag. Okay, so this is a very particular message. Maybe if somebody comes to you um, unexpectedly in, yeah. Um, trying to offer you easy solutions. that's not where you need to go and where you need to be there's definitely a message here how to clear this out is to reject <sighs> tell me more about the comic the comic is also a card about someone who covers pain with humor let me see a little bit more When in the dark, sarcastic, harsh, brooding, and drunk. Hmm. Watch out for that too. Pisces. The shadow of Pisces can be wasted. Okay. It can be somebody who uh, is definitely not fully, fully conscious. Some kind of substance here. Yeah, I'm here. Don't drink the Kool-Aid which makes sense with this whole message yeah okay so there could be someone who's really harsh and maybe they're drunk on power you definitely need to say no to that an easy elixir is not the solution i feel like we need to go further though how can we clear this shadow energy that's trying to get us to depend on them how can we clear this out king of swords and queen of swords <laughs> well there's that aquarius moon energy coming in yeah this is um be firm be firm in your truth your truth right your truth is the truth and you might have to cut some people out, some things out. Not be scared to say it as it is. And band with people who are also not scared of the truth and telling the truth. This is your divine masculine and your divine feminine side really not taking anybody's bullshit okay this is i'm not asleep i'm wide awake and not only am i wide awake and do i see the truth but i could call it out too i'm gonna call it out not because you're trying to war with someone or create any kind of ego game or anything like that but because well why the emperor <laughs> It's your boss <laughs> because Aries energy in the light because you're bringing Aries energy back into the light the Aries new moon in the light right so once the eclipse is over here you are the Emperor here we are the Emperor in order to be the Emperor you have to in the light right you have to be truthful about your purpose, your passion, your activation, your intentions, and your love. How can we protect ourselves? Well, I think we've covered that kind of, but let's see what came out. The ocean.
the Three of Wands, and the King of Wands. Well, we move in our direction, we move down our path. Light enters the dense energy of the earth. We use this moment as a part of our awakening, not as a moment of fear. And I know I'm talking like this is a big scale thing, and it probably is on some level, but this is also individual things that happen to us in our life. Maintain your vision, the ocean, deep, deep, deep inside of you, which you're getting to know more and more of, there's this beautiful vision of your path, your purpose, your passion. The moon controls the tides of the ocean. And you're getting real cozy with the moon, dissolving the identities that don't serve us, understanding that you're guiding you, you got your back, you are spirit, you are you are your spirit team too. Okay, it's all all are one. All are one. Think about that. That means your spirit too. All right? Not from an ego place like, oh, I am God. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. But there might be someone else out there saying that or being like that. And that's the person you'd be like, uh, no thanks. No, thank you. I'm hearing the curtain will fall. Interesting. I feel like some things are getting exposed as well, but that's just kind of, um, I'm hearing it's an artifact. It's an artifact of the past. Some things are getting exposed. It's an artifact of the past. What the heck does that mean? Okay, I'll, I'll just want to find this, the phoenix. It's an artifact of the, of the past that is rising from the ashes. The exposure, maybe this is like ancestral bloodlines, like some people's shady <laughs> ancestral bloodlines are being exposed or, or the way they've been using them. The way they've been using them have, okay, this might be about big powers. The way that people have been using their ancestral bloodlines are being exposed. Artifacts from the past coming to light, rising from the ashes. Huh. We've manifested this truth as a collective. Okay. <laughs> let's get one of these cards. I don't know what it's going to tell us, but let's just go for it. And then I think, I think that's it. I mean, that's a lot. Thanks for being here. Sacred inner space, sacral chakra, tenderness and sensuality. This is the center of creativity. It's what we're talking about, that sacred inner space, getting to know that light within sword of light divine protect protection cords cut breakthrough energy and the emerald tablet activation cosmic ordering divine alchemy and conscious manifesting yeah i feel like we're moving from a place of unconscious manifestation you know manifesting things we don't want we don't even know that we're doing it or being programmed by others or following other people's paths unconsciously with you know we didn't know it's outside of our awareness but we've done the work now we're maintaining our faith and things are coming into cosmic order within us and we're beginning to consciously manifest our reality i love you so much I'll see you next time.